Up next on Lion TV, we have a story about our awesome cafeteria ladies and another story on a recent deadly earthquake that took place in Haiti. And me, Andrew Tyler, with your Lion Fest forecast. All that and more, Lion TV starts now. Welcome back, Cersei High. It's good to be with you this Friday. I'm Marley Price. And I'm Ashley Coker, and I'm glad to be back with our first show of the year. Let's hear some announcements. ASU BB will be on campus Tuesday, August 24th, and Wednesday, August 25th, from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m. to register dual enrollment students. The first eSports meeting will be after school on Thursday the 26th. The games currently offered are the League of Legends, Rocket League, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Splatoon 2, and Madden. It will last about 30 minutes and there will be casual smash practices afterwards. Starting Monday, you can visit Mrs. Cook in room 110 before school or email her to purchase a 2021 yearbook. Books are $50. For next year's book, go to Jostin's website to place an order. A growing number of Arkansas hospitals are beginning to require all staff to get vaccinated since the state's COVID-19 hospitalizations dropped after hitting records three days in a row. Many hospitals said that they would require employees to be fully vaccinated by November 1st. Arkansas's COVID cases have skyrocketed in the recent weeks due to the ultra-contagious Delta variant and the state's low vaccination rate. The, state's ranks, the state ranks fourth in the country for new cases, according to John Hopkins University researchers. President Biden announced that all U.S. troops are to be pulled out of Afghanistan by September 11, 2021. Many fear that as the U.S. military leaves, the Taliban will gain power and return to their old rule. Older generations can remember the Taliban's previous rule when they largely confined women to their homes, banned television and music, and held public executions. On Tuesday, Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid spoke at a news conference promising that they would respect women's rights and ensure a safer Afghanistan. Despite this, many Afghans are fighting to flee the country. After a deadly earthquake in Haiti last weekend, officials have reported that the death toll has risen by more than 500. This brings the current toll to around 1,900 and more than 9,900 Haitians injured. As the West Coast wildfires progress, firefighters have been faced with dangerously windy weather and are struggling to keep the nation's largest wildfire from advancing towards Northern California. In small mountain towns like Grizzly Flats, California, the wildfires have destroyed almost all its residents' homes and have filled the streets with downed power lines and poles. Officials are concerned for what more damage could be done as the fires make their way towards larger cities. Wow, there is quite a bit going on all over the world. Seems like it. I wonder what forecast will be like next week back here in Searcy. Well, Andrew Tyler has our weather updates for this week, so take it away. Today we'll have a high of 89 degrees, scattered thunderstorms with a 60% chance of rain. Winds will be coming in at south-southwest at 7 miles per hour. Your humidity will be 82% and your sun rose at 6.30 a.m. Moving on to tonight, Lion Fest will see a low of 74 degrees. Partly cloudy with a 19% chance of rain. Winds are coming in at south southwest at 5 miles per hour. And humidity is 93%. And your sun will set at 7.49 p.m. In the Almanac, last seven days temperatures was a high of 99 degrees and a low of 66 degrees. Your monthly average of precipitation was 2.69 inches and month to date was 1.01 .01 inches. Moving on to the five cast. Saturday will be mostly sunny, 94 degrees is the high and 74 degrees is the low, 16% chance of rain. Sunday will be partly cloudy and 95 degrees is the high and 74 degrees is the low and 24% chance of rain. Monday will be mostly sunny, 97 degrees is the high, 73 degrees is the low with a 7% chance of rain. Tuesday will be sunny, 98 degrees is the high, 73 degrees as the low, and 5% chance of rain. And Wednesday will see a high of 97 degrees, 71 degrees as the low, and a 24% chance of rain. Looks like we're going to be staying with those hot summer temperatures well through the next five days. 
Back to you at the news desk. Thanks for those updates, Andrew. Looks like the storms will go away soon. Yay, I'm ready for some sun. Me too. Ashley, what's for lunch today? I'm starving. For lunch today, we'll be having corn dog, monsticoli pasta, cheese-filled garlic breadstick, seasoned corn, green beans, Granny Smith apples with caramel dip, bunny grams, pears, and milk variety. Sounds good. Be sure to thank our wonderful lunch ladies for all the hard work that goes into preparing our delicious lunches. I sure will. While we're talking about them, let's watch a story about by Megan Homeyer shot back in 2019 about our lunch ladies. I can't wait. What's your favorite part of the school day? Chances are you just thought about lunch. During a busy school day, it's good to take a break, sit back, and eat lunch with your friends. But how are these lunches made? Who makes them? Well, it's all up to our hardworking lunch ladies. I do breakfast, and then I uh, cook the hot part of salad bar, and I'm a cashier for breakfast and lunch. You may not realize what a hard job this can be. It can get grueling because they have to be on time and deliver good quality food, which can be difficult because there's hundreds of kids waiting to eat. It's a, a hard job, it's physical, but it's just very rewarding. There are several duties lunch ladies must complete throughout the school day and even before students start showing up. They have to prepare so that every student gets a hot meal. They have to clean, cook, carry, and set up everything. I work the salad bar do all the vegetables, cut, and prepare it. But it's all worth it in the end. There's lots of laughs to be had with coworkers and the kids. Lunch ladies are able to make special connections with the kids and even make some new friends. Laughter, we hit the fun we have here. I never thought it would be, you know, so much fun in working in the cafeteria. Anyway. I've met lots of kids through the years. I've been here almost 10 years now. and. Uh, I still keep up with some of them after school if they'll, you know, if I see them on Facebook or see them out. And uh, I saw a boy the other day that graduated like five years ago, and I talked to him for a while. It's just neat to see what they're doing when they get out of school. I love to love on them and to see them and meet them and make lasting relationships. It's a wonderful job to have, and uh, you're off in the summers, and you just get to make good relationships good friendships and relationships with everyone. Although it can be a hard job, being a cafeteria worker is worth it. There's lots of laughs to be had, people to meet, and friends to be made. Back to the news desk. Wow, they work so hard. They sure do. What's next on the agenda, Marley? Next, Jacob Showey has some exciting sports updates for us. Yay, take it away, Jacob. Good morning, Searcy High School. In local sports, the Searcy Lions volleyball team played a game yesterday against Jacksonville. We don't have the final score at the moment, but once we get more information, we'll be sure to tell you guys. Later this evening, Searcy will be having their annual Lion Fest at Lions Stadium. Tickets will be priced at $5, and the events will start at 5 p.m. So come out and support your Searcy Lions tonight. The Searcy Lions tennis team played Mountain Home and Conway Tuesday, and then they played Cabot yesterday. On Tuesday's meet, the boys tied 3-3 against Mountain Home and lost to Conway 0-4, while the girls tied with Conway 3-3 and beat Mountain Home 4-2. We don't have word on the results of the Cavett game yet, but we were able to catch an interview with tennis player Haley Tansinko. Um, throughout the season, we just have a lot of practices, drilling, doing everything we can to make our hits better and more accurate and precise. We're trying to basically get to state obviously, but then also um, working well as a team in doubles. In national sports, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics ended earlier this month with the United States coming on top with 133 medals, then China with 88, Russia with 71, Great Britain with 65, and then Japan with 58. Congratulations to every athlete who competed, and we can't wait to see you guys back in 2024. Also in national news, the NFL started their preseason last weekend with five rookie QBs being Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Mac Jones, and Justin Fields making their first appearance in the NFL, each leaving a solid impression from fans around the country. In the MLB, Cincinnati Reds first baseman Joey Votto got his 2000th hit of his MLB career against the Cubs last Monday. Congratulations to Votto on such a great feat, and we wish to see more from him in the future. Well, Cersei, that's all the sports updates I have for you today. See you again next Wednesday. 
Now back to the news desk. Thanks for those sports updates, Jacob. Well, that wraps up our first show of the year. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cersei High Lion TV. And follow us on Twitter at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and on Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off, I'm Marley Price. And I'm Ashley Coker. See you Wednesday.